Hello. Today's poem we're considering is Hope is the Thing with Feathers by Emily Dickinson. Before we start, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so. It really helps us provide more content. I have the poem here, so let's start. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. Hope is the Thing with Feathers is one of Emily Dickinson's most famous poems and there's a lot to unpack here so let's start. Employing an extended metaphor the poet likens the concept of hope to a feathered bird that is permanently perched in the soul of every human. There it sings, never stopping in its quest to inspire. In the first stanza, the speaker attempts to describe hope. The use of speech marks around the word stresses how difficult this is to conceptualise. The word thing stresses how difficult hope is to define. Employing extended metaphor and personification, the speaker likens hope to a bird. It has feathers, perches on the soul and sings a tune without words. Feathers suggests hope is warm and comforting, perhaps even beautiful in colour. And like wing feathers, hope can be strong and uplifting. Perched in the human soul, suggests hope never leaves us and is lodged in the deepest part of who we are. A tune without words suggests hope is a special song we engage with emotionally rather than rationally. When our logic tells us a situation is not going to end well, hope sings to us and comforts us. The song is endless, a constant companion through life. In the second stanza, the speaker expands on hope's qualities. Hope sings the sweetest when the going gets tough, when the gale starts to blow. Only the worst sore storm could embarrass or trouble this little bird's song. Hope keeps us warm during the worst situations and through the chaos and mayhem of life. In the third stanza, the poet introduces the first person voice with the pronoun I, making this a highly personal poem. And it is reasonable to assume that the poet is also the speaker in the poem. The speaker continues to stress how hope is there in the worst of situations. She has heard it singing in the chilliest land and on the strangest sea. She shows that hope is selfless. Hope comforts people and never asks anything in return. This revelation is placed in the poem's final two lines for emphasis. Yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. The rhyme scheme ABCB lends a lyric quality to the poem. So when read, it sounds like a song, a song of hope. Dickinson uses an irregular rhythm and her use of dashes 15 in total, often lends a jarring quality that gives the impression of conversation when people pause slightly to collect their thoughts before conveying them. Added to this 
is Dickinson's use of an irregular beat in the iambic trimeter she uses. For example, we have an opening trochee followed by two iams and an extra beat of feminine ending. Hope is the thing with feathers. This enables the poet to place emphasis on hope in the poem's opening line. It also signals that her concept of what hope is will be the poem's central theme. While line two follows this beat, lines nine and 11 employ a different beat. I've heard it in the chillless land. The ninth line can be scanned as iambic tetrameter, yet never in extremity. Note the use of spondy, pyrrhic and two iams. These techniques give the poem an authentic conversational tone and the impression that the speaker is trying as best as possible to describe an abstract idea like hope. If Shakespeare is the Bard of Avon, then Emily Dickinson is certainly the Belle of Amherst. Although a writer of highly original poetry, very little of her work was published in her lifetime. Only seven out of 1800 poems she wrote. After Emily Dickinson died in 1886, her sister Lavinia collated and promoted this substantial body of work. Emily Dickinson never titled her poems. After she died, they were numbered and titles added for ease of reference. For most of her life, Emily was a recluse, living at her family home in Amherst, Massachusetts. Reserved, her poetry reflects a sharp intellect, lively imagination and deep reflection. A unique talent, her trademark dashes were accompanied by eccentric capitalised nouns, for example in this poem, Gale and C. She was familiar with the German language, which often capitalises nouns, and she capitalises certain words to stress their importance. Her gift as a writer is presenting everyday objects and events in ways we have not considered before and, as in this poem, turning abstract concepts into concrete objects so we can better understand them. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If so, please hit the like button and ring the bell. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it would be fantastic and really helpful if you could, because it helps us keep providing the content for this channel. Also, don't forget to check out our other videos on writing and textual analysis. Until next time, from Carol and me, write well. <laughs>